and thank you so much for joining us on Hope TV. This is where you look and live. My name is Sharon Aitore Wangenye and you are much welcome for another episode of Testify, where our faith keeps growing. Today we have Catherine Ngovo Macau. She is a Kenyan living in the UK, married for 14 years, something of having issues believing till now. <laughs> but she's a mother and uh, she's an author and a lot of many other things which she will tell us about. Catherine, Karibu sana. Asante. We are glad to have you on Hope TV. Thank you so much. So I, I'm still having issues believing that you're married for 14 years. <laughs> it's a <the> truth. <laughs> yeah? Yes. All right, let's start with who Catherine is and you're growing up. We would love to hear your story. All right, so Catherine is a very ordinary woman. Uh, I believe the real identity of me is one totally loved and accepted by God. Uh, now I grew up right here in Kenya, uh, specifically in Kitui. I went to school there, my primary school, secondary school. Um, it was when I was in secondary school that uh, I became a Christian. And that's many years ago and wow, I haven't been perfect over the years, but that changed the trajectory of my life. Um, then I joined Nairobi University to study pharmacy, and uh, it was while I was at the university that I met my husband, and immediately after, we got married and moved to the UK. All right, okay. Yes. Tell me about growing up. How was it growing up? How, how many are you in your family? <laughs> So I come from a very big family, one of 11, uh, seven girls, four boys. So growing up was, was fun. I'm very blessed. It was a happy family. You know, um, my dad was a um, really good father. He taught us so much just about um, being totally loved. He never tagged his love for us on good performance or good behavior. And that confidence has actually stayed with me. Uh, my mom is, um, you know, a rock in the family. So it was, you know, a normal family, but um, quite a happy family, I would say. Um, so growing up in the village was, you know, uh, not the easiest, but um, you somehow just make it through, you know. I went to school there and um, it was just, um, that's all I knew really, so I couldn't compare it with anything else. But uh, generally now looking back, I think I had a really happy childhood. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mm. So in high school, you say you became a Christian. That means you gave your life to Jesus Christ. Sure. Uh, what made you make that decision? So I actually grew up in a Christian family. And uh, while I was um, in class eight of my primary school, that was the first encounter I had with God, you know. Um, my mom was seriously injured uh, by gangsters. And I remember praying and asking God to, to not let my mom die, you know, if he was real. And sure enough, you know, my mom lived and my mom is still alive to date. And that was the first time I knew that God is real. But still, I did not make that personal commitment. It was while in secondary school, all by myself. You know, I just sat back and thought, probably because of the pressure of exams and yeah. everything. But um, it was such a profound decision. While I have doubted many things in my life, I have never doubted that I am a Christian. That decision was, was final, you know. I just knew that um, Christ was, you know, was in my heart and that was going to be the core of the person that I would be from that moment. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. And now you get into uh, campus, yeah. Nairobi University. Mm -hmm. in life in campus for most people is not as easy. Mm -hmm. How was it for you? Well, it was uh, a different ball game altogether. You know, at, I was really young. I was um, I was actually, I had in turn 19, I was 18, so then you're just thrown into all this freedom, you know, you're living away from home for the first time in Nairobi, and it was just like finding my feet, just trying to find out who I really am and discovering myself, you know, just the, the exposure to, to boys and the exposure to people from all different backgrounds. So. It was both exciting and scary, mm. but um, 
Obviously, the fact that I was a Christian did determine a lot of things, but really it was a journey of discovery. Yeah. yeah. So why did you choose pharmacy as a career? Is it something you always wanted to do or...? So the main thing is I knew I wanted to do something scientific. So when then it came to a time of uh, choosing our careers in Form 4, I remember thinking, is it going to be pharmacy or medicine? And actually I, I took like a whole day just thinking of it and praying. So I believe really it was God led. Uh, sometimes I look back and wonder, uh, could I have done something else? But I do remember I actually intentionally took time to think and pray about it. So it had to be something scientific. I was more drawn to the sciences. And uh, looking back, you know, I've had a fantastic time uh, just practicing pharmacy, so no regrets whatsoever. Um, I think if I wasn't in pharmacy, I would be doing fashion. <laughs> I'm quite interested in clothes, so that would be the other thing. <laughs> Thank you for answering my question. That was the next question I was going to ask you. Yeah. All right. So now campus is done mm -hmm. and life has to go on. Yeah. Tell me what happened next. You say you met your husband. Yeah. So while in fourth year, I met Mark, my husband, and um, he was just in the process of um, moving to the UK. So we then immediately got engaged, but it was um, just about, you know, long distance relationship. So that was not easy. But the good thing is I was in university, very busy in my final year. So I was busy and he was busy settling in the UK. So immediately after my internship, he came back home. And um, just within six weeks, we decided to get married and arranged a really simple wedding. And that was it. We got married. Um, then we moved to the UK. I moved to the UK, was already there. Had you gone there to work or to study? To work. Okay. Yeah. Right. So moving to the UK was um, everything scary. Uh, it was the first, you know, ma major change I'd ever gone through. Um, it was about living family in Kenya, but also the excitement of joining my husband. So it was, yeah, a mixture of excitement, a mixture of um, fear of change. So then I find myself in the UK and that was um, difficult career-wise. It took me time to settle down in my career uh, because the entry level for pharmacist is master's while in Kenya is bachelor. So I had to quickly do my master's and also, you know, just find my feet there, get used to a different culture, make new friends and just to live in away from home. Mm. So it was a lot of change, but um, we pulled through, you know. Did, did you did you think of it as a as a great uh, opportunity? I mean, growing up, did you ever think that one day you would be in the UK, living there? Actually, now, absolutely not. Um, recently, I actually joked to my husband that he did not even ask me whether I wanted to live there. You know, he just pulled me along, and I really had never thought. Um, I would um, live out of the country and the main reason is I come from a very close-knit family so I had never imagined that I would be away from them. So while on one hand it was uh, yes very exciting but actually there are moments those first uh, few months that I had regrets you know I thought I would rather really be in Kenya. Yeah. All right mm -hmm. so you finally were able to settle in the UK, mm -hmm. got a job yeah. and life moved on as usual? Yeah, life moved on. Um, yeah, so it took me about three years to settle in my career. Then I uh, found a good job. And um, it was then, you know, about four years later that we had our first son. And that was awesome, you know, um, such a gift, such a blessing to us. And it, it kind of changes you, you know, you just think, what did we do before we had uh, the little one? Because everything now just rotates around, you know, your your, your little one so that was exciting and uh, I mean again another big change in our lives all right yeah okay and at that we take a short break Catherine is now living in the UK they are blessed with a son so how does life progress from there keep it right here mm -hmm. 